Today, we're going to get really practical. I want to share with you one of the ways that the Holy Spirit taught me how to develop my spiritual eyes for seeing in the Spirit and my spiritual ears for hearing in the Spirit. Friends, this is a key to how you do life with God. You weren't created to do life alone. You weren't created to do life alone because you were created to do life with God. Well, doing life with God has to do with being able to see and hear by the Holy Spirit. Jesus says in John, he says it multiple times, I only do what I see my father do, and I only say what I hear my father say. He was hearing and he was seeing by the Holy Spirit. Friends, the very same Holy Spirit that Jesus said, I must leave so that I can send you your advantage. The Holy Spirit, who is your teacher, the Holy Spirit, who is your guide, the Holy Spirit, who helps you develop that spiritual seeing and hearing. Jesus, when he spoke often, said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. He was talking about spiritual ears, an ear that is attuned to hearing by the Spirit of God that could hear the rhema word of God. Friends, it is not difficult. God did not set us up to fail. He wants us to develop in these things. Matter of fact, his word says in 2 Corinthians 3, 18, it says, and we all with unveiled faces, means that veil has been lifted, talking about the difference between the law of God and the spirit, beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image progressively from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is in the spirit. This specifically is talking about being able to see and look by the spirit of God with spiritual eyes and how you progressively go from glory to glory as you take a deeper look. That beholding is a deeper look into the things of God. It's kind of like looking into a puddle. If you just look into a puddle, you'll see a few things. But if you really start beholding and you really look deep into that puddle, you're going to start seeing these little microbes and all these different levels and layers of things happening within that puddle. We need to learn to behold, to look deeper, to take a deeper look in the spirit. And that, my friends, is how we start being transformed progressively from glory to to glory, to glory. I was traveling with my son, my oldest son, who's about to go to college, and we were talking, and I was asking him, what have you been hearing from the Lord concerning this next season of your life? And I saw him just sit over there, and he closed his eyes, and he's listening for the voice of the Holy Spirit to speak to him, which I love, so precious to me. And he said, I really haven't heard anything specific. I know God has good things for me and has already prepared things, but I really haven't heard anything. And I just started sharing with him how you can see by the Spirit and asking questions and engage in that conversation with the Holy Spirit. These are things that the Lord taught me. I said, well, let's just ask the Lord. It's asking the Lord, Lord, show me a picture of what you have for me. As I'm instructing him in this, I see a picture of this big tree and this and and then you keep looking at it you pull out a little bit and it's not just a big tree a big pine tree it's a forest and not just a forest but then I'm looking down the truck and at the very base of the truck I see these tiny little mushrooms and I just hear the Lord saying because as I'm seeing this picture in my imagination of my spirit I'm not seeing it with my eyes. I'm driving. I didn't wreck because all of a sudden I was transported into a forest. No, I'm seeing a picture in my imagination. Just like you could imagine yourself right now sitting on a beach and the waves are crashing. You're not seeing that physically with your eyes. But you now, I have created an image within your imagination. This is what I'm talking about, about the eyes of the spirit. So I'm seeing this As I'm talking and explaining to him how you can get an image from the Holy Spirit by asking, Holy Spirit, show me a picture of your plans for me. And then I start hearing in my spirit with spiritual ears the interpretation of that image. 
And the Lord was just speaking about how God is doing a transforming growth inside of him. And there's going to be things that are growing in his life of God that's going to be easy to see, that are tall and strong like that tree that's easy to see. But then there's going to be things that are on a micro level, like those tiny little mushrooms at the base that other people might not notice, but know that God is doing a work in the big things and the small things. This is a transforming growth season for him and all of that came as I was just explaining to my son how a simple question of Lord show me a picture of the plans you have for me now it wasn't a picture of him driving down the road and moving in and it was a, it was kind of an abstract picture that the Holy Spirit gave well as we're talking about it he said well I saw a word I said well, what word did you see he said mom I saw the word personalized personalized I said, wow, bud, what does that mean? And he said, well, it means what it says, that, that God has personalized this journey. It's personal. It's, it's, it's for me. He's got the plans for me. And I'm like, yeah, that's really good. And I'm at the same time I'm asking him what he heard, I'm having a conversation with the Holy Spirit, and I'm looking at that word. I'm beholding that word. I'm not just gleaning, oh, that's awesome, praise the Lord, and moving past it. No, I'm beholding that word and looking deeper into it just like that puddle just like that pond I'm looking deeper for deeper things of the Lord in it and the Lord starts showing me and speaking to me about that and the Lord said you know what the image that came to my mind was as a mom that goes and prepares her kid to go to camp and she personalizes everything I mean she's put name on that kid's underwear on that kid's toothbrush on that kid's bedroll on their backpack on their luggage you are personalizing everything and I hear the Lord say I have put his name on everything that I have set apart for him I have put his name on the car that he needs to get there I have put his name on the place he needs to stay I have put his name on the friends he is to have I have put his name on the job that he's to get the Lord has personalized and it already has his name on it glory to God what a great and encouraging word that just stirs up faith the word says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God that's hearing by the scripture but it's also hearing by that rhema word of the spirit of God glory to God I tell you we got home and there was a check in the mail he had had a scholarship that uh, a, a scholarship that was about a thousand dollars and we opened up that check and it was a scholarship they had given him two thousand dollars they had given him twice the amount that they had said that they would give him guess what that check had his name on it it was personalized praise God early on back in college I had started learning from the Holy Spirit to ask him more questions. And I can tell you, I am still learning to ask him more questions. That's how you have a communication with the Lord. You ask him questions and you listen for him to answer. But the way that you can practice those spiritual eyes and those spiritual ears, because we've got to develop in these things, going from glory to glory as we start to partner with the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of us through Christ Jesus. Listen, if you haven't given your life to Jesus, you have nothing to hear. You can't hear by the Holy Spirit. Only those that have received Jesus have received the Spirit of God on the inside of them. Glory to God. And that's you, my friend. You can hear the voice of God. But I would say, Lord, show me a picture of your love for me. And this is what I want you to do. When you're done watching this, I want you to sit with the Lord and say, Lord, show me a picture of your love for me. And whatever comes to your mind, a lot of times I'll get a picture of the ocean and I'll see it and I'll see different things. And you don't just see it and be like, oh, glory to God. No, no, no. You get that image in your imagination of your spirit and you behold it. You keep looking. You keep looking. So you don't just see the surface things. So you see deeper into it and you're listening to the Holy Spirit and what he has to say about that. And I will say, Lord, tell me about your love for me. And so taking that picture, that image that he gave to the imagination, the mind of my spirit, I will start hearing him tell me of how, he, how that picture relates to his love for me. And I can tell you, friend, that that picture and the words that he says always 
is rooted and grounded in the truths of God's word. He's not going to tell you something opposite to what's in his scripture, but the things that you hear from him will be echoed by the scripture. They'll be confirmed by the scripture. Thank you, Jesus. So this is something I want you to do. When you're done with this, I want you to ask the Lord, show me a picture of your love for me. And then, Lord, tell me about your love for me. And you can do this concerning different things. But I asked the Lord one time, I said, God, I need to see this in your scripture. I see that Jesus, this is how he lived his life, by by seeing and hearing by the Holy Spirit. That was the key to the doing, to seeing the miracles as he only did what he saw his father doing and he only said what he heard his father saying. Lord, show me in your scripture because I know, I see we're supposed to practice righteousness and practice by your spirit and not practice the works of the flesh. And I heard the voice of God and I always want to say the voice of God sounds like a thought that comes up from your heart, not down from your head. And I heard the voice of God say, go and read the first part of Jeremiah. So that's what we're going to do. Now, the book of Jeremiah is a story of a young prophet. This young man, Jeremiah, was called to be a prophet, but he didn't know it yet. Chapter one, we're going to start in verse five. It says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. This is God speaking to Jeremiah. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Then Jeremiah said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am a young man. But the Lord said, Do not say, I am a young man, because everywhere I send you, you shall go, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. But this young man is saying, I don't, I don't know how to be a prophet. I don't know how to speak for you. I don't, I don't know. This is the moment that God is calling Jeremiah as a prophet. Now let's keep reading. We're going to go to verse 10. God says, see, I have appointed you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to uproot and break down, to destroy and to overthrow to build and to plant. Glory to God. This is what we do by the Holy Spirit. This is what we do with the authority. We bind and we loose. We plant and we uproot things that are in our life and in our children's lives. And we speak to those things of the power of God. Verse 11. The word of the Lord came to me, Jeremiah speaking, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? Now, this is a moment where a young man is saying, I don't know how to be a prophet. I don't know how to speak to you, Lord. And God is saying, I have set you apart. I knew you before you were knit together in your mother's womb. Friend, the same is said for you. God knew you before you were knit together in your mother's womb. He has called you. He has anointed you to do life with him to speak on his behalf to those around you, to speak life, to uproot and to plant glory to God. And he is teaching Jeremiah, God himself, how to partner with the Holy Spirit. And he says, Jeremiah, what do you see? And Jeremiah says, I see the branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to him, you have seen well. For I am watching over my word to fulfill it. In that culture, the almond tree was known as the awakening tree. It was the first tree to bud in a new season. And so the Lord saying, you have seen well, and this is what it means. And then the Lord says, Jeremiah, what is it that you see? And the next thing he sees something else. He says, I see a boiling pot tilting away from the north. And he goes on to say, and the Lord says, you have seen well, for this is what it means. Now, what's taking place in this scripture? We are seeing God teach Jeremiah how to activate that prophetic anointing, how to partner with the Holy Spirit that who, by the way, wasn't living in him, but would come upon him. Friends, the Holy Spirit that came upon Jeremiah is the same Holy Spirit that gets to reside and live on the inside of us through Jesus Christ. That is amazing. That is so powerful. 
But this is an example of how God was teaching him, oh, Jeremiah, what is it that you see? And Jeremiah wasn't seeing that with his physical eyes. He wasn't seeing there wasn't an almond branch right in front of him and a big pot of oil. No, he was seeing by the Spirit of God with spiritual eyes. And then he heard what the interpretation is of that. Praise the Lord. Friends, you have been given eyes to see and ears to hear. And you've been given the Holy Spirit by which to see and hear by the Spirit of God, the things of God. His word says in John 16, 13, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all things for he will not speak on his own initiative or authority, but he will speak whatever he hears of the father and he will disclose to you things to come. Verse 14, he will take of what is mine and he will disclose it to you. It says all things in 15, all things that the father has are mine. Because of this, I said that he, the spirit will take from what is mine and will reveal it to you. Right here, we have the promise that the Holy Spirit is the one that helps you see. He will guide you and will help you hear because he will speak to you. He will show you things to come. He will speak to you and declare to you the things of the Lord. Friends, we have got to develop our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears and not just move past them once we see something or hear something. Let's not just be observers. That's the difference between an observer and someone that has a deep personal intimate relationship with him is because they take time to behold they behold these things they meditate on these things of the lord they look deeper in they don't just let it tickle their ears like a sensationalist and move on no you don't have to be searching for that next big move of god when you have the holy spirit on the inside of you god himself is moving on the inside of you don't look for a move of god when you have god to move on the inside of you it's time to practice seeing and hearing by the holy spirit this is how you do life hit subscribe share with a friend and comment to build community join me on youtube instagram and your favorite podcast platform how to do life with life